Welcome back to uh, Unit 6. This is Unit 6-5. We're actually going to get to a very high point in Algebra 1 called the Quadratic Formula. You'll be using this not just in Algebra 1, but Algebra 2, Pre-Calculus, Calculus 1. This will be with you basically for the rest of your math career. So we're going to learn uh, today how to uh, remember it and apply it and use it. All right, let's start with our math career. Today our math career is a technical writer. Have you ever gone on the internet and looked up a uh, how-to or gotten those directions that you open your present and it has this big book of things how to do something well these are the people that write all these instructions they're a professional writer who design create uh, maintain and update technical documentation uh, you can see the salaries over there on the left looks like some pretty um, modest salary to begin with but high-end salaries are pretty nice there six figures there's your math you'll need there at the bottom and uh, nice job if you like to work mainly uh, independently and stick to some good detail and have strong English skills. All right, today we will learn to solve the quadratic equations by using the quadratic formula. You'll notice that the, both in capital letters there because it is a big formula that you'll be using for a long, long time. So our vocabulary today is the quadratic formula as stated. And quadratic equations can be solved several different ways. We've already learned how to solve them by graphing. Remember that uh, in this particular um, image here, this has two zeros or two x-intercepts. It passes through at negative four and positive four. We can also solve by factoring, where we had the zero product property. So in this case, the answer would be uh, x is the set negative two and positive three. And we can also solve by completing the square. Completing the square is where we find a c and we add it to both sides and then we find a perfect square trinomial. Now, the question here is, um, couldn't someone just come up with an equation to find all the values of x at one time? And of course, the answer to that is going to be yes, and that's called the quadratic formula. So, let's unveil the quadratic formula for you. Here's your unveiling. This definitely, absolutely, positively has to be in your math notebook. You're going to have to remember this for a long, long time. And we're going to show you a nice, simple way to remember <coughs> this masterpiece of mathematics x equals, and you have this rational expression here after the x equals, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, and all of that's over 2a. So you may have the following question, how are you supposed to remember all that at once at any time? Now I've had several students come back to me uh, years later and in the middle of an SAT or the middle of a, an exam in Algebra 2 or even Calculus 1, they remembered what we did together and it saved their can. So here we go. Uh, here's your quadratic formula and guess what? We're going to learn a song here. It's sung to the tune of Pop Goes the Weasel. Now you remember this from uh, being much, much younger and if you actually listen to those words it's kind of creepy. So we're going to put some good words to it to help you remember your song. And I did use the word we because I have coerced a couple of, a couple, a handful, many past students to help us out here. So, ready, set, and here we go. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Outstanding. So if you just apply that song every time you see this uh, quadratic formula, it's very, very simple to remember. So. We break it into four sentences there, and we can start right back at the beginning with our looped music here. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Very good. Okay, now we'll be doing some of that in class together, so be prepared to have your singing voices on. Uh, let's look at an example here. Uh, to solve the quadratic formula, we've got an equation here, 2x squared plus 3x minus 5 equals 0. First things first, is that in proper form? It is. Let's identify a, b, and c. So a is 2, b is 3, and c is negative 5. If we take this and we plug it into our formula, we're just going to take whatever value is for whatever value it is for B and plug in a 3 and whatever value is for A plug in a 2 and whatever value is for C and plug in a negative 5. Alright then, so if we plug this in, let's see what we get. We get the opposite of B which is in this case negative 3 
and we're going to have a 3 squared there inside the radical sign. And remember that inside the radical, we're going to multiply backwards, multiply backwards. And all of that's going to be over 2 times A, which in this case is 2 times 2. All right, let's clean this up now. So once we get uh, inside the radical, you've got 9 plus 40. Well, we know that's easy. That's 49. So that cleans down to a nice, simple problem of negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 49, all that over 4. Now, what is the principal square root of 49? We know that's 7. What's the negative square root of 49? Again, that is going to be negative 7. So when we get to this point here, we're going to have um, a simplified numerator that has to have two different equations. We're going to have negative 3 plus 7 over 4 and negative 3 minus 7 over 4. So let's go ahead and look at these individually now, just like we've done in the past. Negative 3 plus 7 over 4, that gives us 4 over 4, which of course is 1. What about the right-hand side? Well, if you're careful there, negative 3 subtract 7 is negative 10. Negative 10 over 4 is negative 5 over 2. And what's our solution set? Negative 5 over 2, comma, 1. Okay, well done there. Uh, how about this one now? Why don't you tackle this one on your own? You've got x squared minus 5x plus 6. Uh, if you could remember your song here, how does our song go? wonder how our song goes. Let's see. If we had our song going, I think we can have our song going. We remember that it's simply x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That's right, all over 2a, you got it, all over 2a, outstanding. So just keep repeating that as you uh, write down your quadratic formula there, and it'll all come together for you. So a is 1, b is negative 5, c is 6, have at it, go ahead and press pause, and uh, sing along while you're doing your math. I'll be right here when you get back. All right then, so let's see. Here's maybe the trickiest part here. This one has b equals negative five. So what does this negative sign here in front of b mean? It means the opposite of b. So if b is already negative five, then what's the opposite of negative five? That's gonna be positive five. So let's be careful there. Got a little bit of a typo here. This two should be out here, but that's all right. We know that negative five squared is gonna be 25. Don't forget to multiply backwards here. Multiply backwards, six times one times negative 4, that's going to give you that inside the radical sign there, 25 minus 24, which happens to be, well, it's simple, that's the number 1. So let's clean this up a little bit, and we end up with 5 plus or minus the square root of 1 over 2, plus or minus square root of 1 over 2. What is the square root of 1? Well, we know that's going to be plus or minus 1. You've got 5 plus or minus 1 over 2. Do those two simple equations back and forth, and we end up with 5 plus 1 over 2, 5 minus 1 over 2, and streamline that down to your answer. We've got 6 over 2, which of course 3, 5 minus 1 over 2, which is 4, and we end up with your solution set of 2 comma 3. All right then, I don't know if our mandolin player is still here, looks like you press the time card, that's okay. That's it for Unit 6 5. Uh, if you'd like more instruction, it's there at the top. Uh, Dr. Berger and his compatriots will help you out there. And there's some digital score practice at the bottom. Don't forget your song. Sing away, we'll sing in class, and uh, that's it. Have some fun.